Hi! So like for some reason today I've got a sort of like art teacher vibe going on. At the end of July I went to Young Adult LitCon and I worked there as well on the Penguin booth and it was nice to be able to scope out the booths, have a little look and see which books I wanted because the books there are usually discounted for quite a nice price. I went around on the first day and bought three books that I've actually, I think for all three of them, I've had my eye on them for a while. So number one is Out of the Blue by Sophie Cameron. Gorgeous cover. This is a book that someone recently recommended to me. It sounds just weird enough that I think I'll really like it. In this world, these angels start falling from the sky and then kind of like cults or fandoms start forming around them. The main character's dad actually decides to relocate his family to Edinburgh so they can go find a live angel. I'm very, very into the concept of this book. I constantly keep finding postcards and other little booklets that I picked up at York. These are The Last Namsara and The Caged Queens. These are two really beautiful postcards illustrated by Julia Ardell and they're from the book or maybe they're fan art of the book the Caged Queen. Book number two that I picked up is Witchborn by Nicholas Bowling. I've definitely had this in my hands in a bookshop multiple times. I really, really love medieval settings. This is also to do with an asylum, witchcraft, the streets of London. I'm all up for it. Then there is The Book of Phoenix by Nnedi Okorafor. I already have another book by this author that I really want to read, which is Lagoon. They were selling that as well, but um, I've heard many, many good things about this one. I recently read Binti by the same author, well, a couple of months ago, and I need to incorporate that in like a space sci-fi themed video. This seems like it's kind of like a superhero story because it talks about a research project, the accelerated woman. I can only assume there is a lot of destruction as well going by this cover. The next is one that I have borrowed from a friend and I've been wanting to read this for so long. It is Little Black Book. The author of this book actually has a podcast called In Good Company, which is incredible and I'll talk about it more in my next podcast themed video. But it made me super curious about this little book, which is subtitled A Toolkit for Working Women. It's a modern career guide. And I think good career advice is hard to find and judging by our podcast, this is going to be excellent. This is a proof copy of The Winter of the Witch. That's oh, so beautiful. This is the third in the trilogy that starts with The Bear and the Nightingale, which was one of my favorite books of last year. So obviously I have a little bit of catching up to do. I need to read book number two. Um, there's a quote on here that says, I will ride the world in between times through the farthest countries of dark and day. So this again had that medieval setting that I love so much, kind of medieval setting. Set in Russia, includes folk tales and magical creatures and stubborn farm girls. So very, very excited that this is going to be a finished trilogy when it's out. It's going to be out in January, so plenty of time for me to catch up. Because it's hard reading books where like the series isn't done, you can't just go through and read all of it. This proof copy was sent to me by Ebury. Then I went to Libraria in London and picked up this book that Rosianna, who was there with me at the time, who's my flatmate, recommended to me. And it's also for an upcoming book to film adaptation video. And it is the Mortal Engines. I think another friend recommended it to me as well. I guess this is kind of like a modern classic, came out in 2001. Also, I forgot that the bookshop does stamps, so I've got a cute little stamp in there. It's about a distant future where cities on wheels fight each other for survival. It kind of reminds me of this Dutch book that I used to love. If you're Dutch and you read a lot of children's books, you might know what I'm talking about. So I'm curious if, um, if I'll find some similarities in there. I'm slowly losing my voice as the video goes by. More medieval settings. Okay, this is apparently today's theme. Look at this massive hunk of a book. Wow. This was a proof copy sent to me by Scholastic and it is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon, who you might know from The Bone Season. I actually haven't read The Bone Season. This is an epic fantasy about a world on the brink of war with dragons. I do like dragons. I haven't read enough books about dragons. I want to talk to uh, Jean from Bookish Thoughts about this when I finish it. This is out in February. Then following on from The Priory of the Orange Tree, A Winter's Promise. This was sent to me by Europa Editions. The character in this book, called Ophelia, excellent name, can travel through mirrors and see the past of objects. Then she travels to what I can only assume is this city and realizes that she is a pawn in bigger political plans. Here they're saying that it is for fans of his dark materials and the Red Queen. And I forgot, it's translated from French. 
Yay for translated fiction. Three last titles. I showed you a fiction book by Jan Campbell last time. And now I can show you the sequel to Franklin's Flying Bookshop. That's for some reason a tongue twister. It is Franklin and Luna Go to the Moon by Jen Campbell. I loved the previous one. Dragons, bookshops, space, what is not to love? I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but uh, it's gonna be a quick read, obviously. It's a beautiful picture book by my friend Jen Campbell and illustrated by Katie Hartnett. In the front, Jen said, Dear Sana, I thought you might enjoy the latest Franklin and Luna adventure, as it's set in space. Then there is The Female Persuasion by Meg Wallitzer. This is a book that Sir Sharon mentioned when I interviewed her um, and she highly recommended it so I wanted to check it out. So this book was kindly sent to me by Vintage. I also listened to a podcast episode, which I'll put in the description, where Mike Wallace talks about this book and that kind of piqued my interest as well. It's about a young, shy college student who then meets this woman who she really looks up to and, he, and who sort of like shapes her way of thinking. And it says that it covers themes of power and influence ego, loyalty, womanhood, and ambition. And then finally, there is this gorgeous one, and it's called End the Ocean Was Our Sky by Patrick Ness, illustrated by Rovina, I'm gonna say Sai. It comes with a little whale bookmark. This seems to be very much in the style of A Monster Calls. So I've read that by Patrick Ness, I really love that. I just read Release, which I really liked, and then The Knife of Never Letting Go was one of my favorite books of last year as well. So more Patrick Ness can only be a good thing. I'm pretty sure this is a retelling of Moby Dick from the point of view of the whale. I'm gonna show you this and then leave it at that. I've never read Moby Dick. Maybe it's time to tackle both of these at the same time. All right, thanks so much for watching this book haul. I'll put links to all the books in the description as usual. If you want to keep up with my reading, you can also follow me on Instagram and Instagram stories at Books and Quills. And I'm also on Goodreads. Link to that will be in the description. Doey!